Hi folks, Dr. Pulsifer here, and <clears throat> I'm going to address the question of what is a battle cruiser? Now, my favorite YouTuber, Drakinafel, uh, took this question on with a case of the Hood, the British called a battle cruiser that was sunk by Bismarck by a very lucky shot, and the USS Iowa, which was generally regarded as a fast battleship. Battlecruiser seems to be a class that existed for a relatively short time, and then it was displaced by fast battleships and, and by aircraft. The idea, and this is about 1910, was that the battlecruiser, being very fast and having a heavy armament, but having lighter, much lighter armor than a battleship, which is what it enabled it to go faster, would be a ship that would be sent out to hunt down raiders, commerce raiders, especially armored cruiser commerce raiders. And it has it happens, there were two German armored cruisers out there, and they were in 1914. So the battle cruiser needed the speed and had to sacrifice something. It sacrificed a little bit of the heavy armament and quite a bit of the um, armor in order to get that speed. Now, what happened later, and, and by the way, two British battle cruisers did hunt down the two German armored cruisers near the Falkland Islands after the German battle cruisers had uh, beat up some British battle cruisers or our armored cruisers that were not as good as the German armored cruisers on the other side of South America, the Pacific side. So, what displaced the battle cruisers in this function? Well, certainly as the war went on, and as much more in World War II, aircraft were more common and they had longer range. And so it was aircraft that would find the raiders, not ships. And then the aircraft or the home ship of the aircraft could vector in cruisers and possibly even battleships to find the raider and sink the raider. They didn't have to have superior speed, they just had to have superior numbers and kind of surround it. So no longer were battle cruisers needed. However, even in World War I, the British had built uh, battleships that were faster than the other battleships, the old battleships, and is faster, faster than the battle cruisers, partly thanks to using oil as a fuel, but partly because they wanted fast battleships. And those ships, such as the War Spite, continued to operate in World War II in having been refitted and so on in, in the interim. So that speed enabled them to do that, whereas the slower battleships were quite limited. You know, the United States had a lot of 20, 21 knot battleships and they mostly served as shore bombardment until toward the end of the war when a bunch of them uh, blocked some Japanese trying to get at the landings on, in Leyte Gulf. So it made sense to have fast battleships. And what the Iowa was, an Iowa class, was a ship that was essentially the same as the preceding classes, such as the North Carolina, but they lengthened the ship made it a lot larger, because they had to, and speeded it up to like 33 knots instead of 27, 28 knots. Fast battleship. It probably wasn't better in a fight than the older ships, except it was faster. But it was different from a battle cruiser because it had proper armor, it had a full battleship uh, complement of our weapons, and it wasn't in any way inferior to other battleships. In fact, the Iowa class was probably the best battleship class, except perhaps, who knows, the, the Masashi and the Yamato, which were slower but had bigger guns. Now, think in terms of space warfare, which is where I use battlecruisers still. You can always pay more to get more when you have technology. That's what the fast battleships amounted to. If the technology is available, of course, it 
has to be available. In Jack Campbell's Lost Fleet series, uh, he includes battle cruisers, but I'm not sure how relevant that is. It, they do benefit from the speed, um, and they don't seem to be that much weaker than the battleships. And so it works in that context, but that's a narrow context. The battlecruisers don't operate independently. They're part of the fleet. And remember, battlecruisers originally were do, invented so they could operate independently and uh, chase down commerce raiders. And in case you don't know, at the Battle of Jutland, a lot of battlecruisers were sunk because they were trying to fight uh, ships with heavy armament, and that lack of armor really hurt them. And of course, the British battle cruisers tended to blow up. Um, in my space war game designs, I like to include battle cruisers sometimes. They are faster speed, weaker defense, and the same offense as a battleship. Um, but thinking to something like the pre World War II and pre nuclear weapons Lensman series, famous science fiction series, you can have multiple designs that increase one of the three of the eternal triangle of offense, defense, and mobility, which is where all this derives from, offense, defense, and mobility. You can have a ship that has much better defense than anything else. You can have a ship that's much faster. You can have a ship that has much better offense. You've got a lot of technology, and you're not limited as much as people were in 1910. Now, whether space navies are going to want all that depends on a lot of parameters like or what kind of weapons are you using. Are you using missiles? Are you using lasers? Are they long range? Are they short range? What are the defenses? And so forth. To me, a space war game is more or less a naval war game um, for those who are not wishing to be constrained by specific history. And... That's why I really like them. I think they're fun to play. I think they're fun to design. But not everybody thinks that way. Many people are attracted by history and historical games. And uh, so there's not a big market for space war games. But their battle cruisers can make sense. Thanks for listening. <laughs>